Ho, 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 everybody. It's Kevin here from Happy Weird Games, and today is my Christmas special. Yeah, that's right, Christmas special 2020. This year we're doing a top 10, instead of doing a review of a specific game or something else, we're doing a top 10 video, and these are a top 10 of my most memorable winter levels in video games. These levels are ice levels, snowy levels, wintry levels, any level that has that sort of icy, wintry, snowy theme to it. Some of them may or may not be actually set in the winter time. Some of them may not actually be levels, but just scenes in video games, such as RPGs. Uh, but for the most part, they basically resemble that winter type of level in a video game. Now, not playing with power! Whoa! Nice graphic! Whoa! Alright, coming in at number 10, we've got the game DuckTales for the NES. This NES classic by Capcom features a story and video game based upon the DuckTales animated TV series by Disney. Now we're specifically looking at the Himalayans level. The Himalayans level is basically a snowy mountain peak. You can go down inside it in the caves, there's giant spiders, there's different bosses, there's a yeti boss. There's different enemy types, and there's a um, different mechanic where you know how you pogo in this game? Well, if you pogo in the snow, it's too deep, so you get sunk into it. And there's a lot of fun in this game. The soundtrack is great on almost every level, including the Himalayans level. Uh, so, yeah, check it out. Next time you play DuckTales, check out this wintry, icy, snowy mountain level, the Himalayas. You can even check it out on DuckTales Remastered for various consoles. This is the Wii U version. Uh, it's pretty much the same game. They added some story elements and cutscenes, and they improved the art style in ways to make it look more like the animated series. And coming in at number 9, we've got a game with 9 in the title, Final Fantasy IX. This happens to be my favorite Final Fantasy video game. There's a small portion near the beginning of the game called the Ice Cavern. The Ice Cavern features uh, an important part of the story where you fight a character known as the Black Waltz, which is a giant black mage character that's kind of important to the story at the beginning. Uh, also, there are different traps and secrets that you can find in the dungeon using the character of Eevee. You can ignite the walls to melt some of the ice to get hidden treasure boxes. You can even find a Moogle encased in the ice. A Moogle or Mog is one of the characters known throughout the Final Fantasy series. This game is a turn-based RPG by Squaresoft and it's released on the PlayStation. Most of the clips I'll have for you today are from the Switch version of the game, which is HD, so it looks a little different. Um, I don't have very many clips of this one today because it was hard to get back to that spot. Uh, there's a certain point in the game where you can't go back to the Ice Cavern, by the way, uh, but it's still a memorable moment in the game, and the soundtrack for it is really good, uh, not just for the whole game, which it is, uh, but the Ice Cavern is a song that stands out to me, and that's a pivotal moment in the game. Usually when I start up the game for the first time, that's usually around the start, the part of the game where I stop playing, uh, just shortly after the Ice Cavern. And it's really a memorable moment. This game's really memorable to me and means a lot to me. Uh, I can't emphasize enough that it was a very important part of my childhood, right when I was like 12 years old, 11 years old maybe. Um, when did this come out? 2000, so I was probably 10 years old. Uh, and this was one of my first very, very big introductions to Final Fantasy series. I'd played 8 before I played 7 and 6, but this was one that really hit me and got me into the series fully. Yeah, and uh, the Ice Cavern level is really great. Had to mention it in this video. Coming in at number 8, we've got a game based all around Christmas. That is The Grinch for the Sega Dreamcast here. Uh, this is based on the story of Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You may have seen the animated version or various movies based on it. This came out around the same time as the Jim Carrey movie made by Ron Howard. And uh, the game is kind of its own story. I did a full review of this. Actually, it was my Christmas special from last year, 2019. So if you want to check that out, you'll learn everything you need to know about this game in that video because I covered it and played the whole game fully. And man, was it an experience. This game is actually really cool. Uh, it's an action platform or collectathon for the Dreamcast. I believe it's also on the PlayStation 1 and I think the Game Boy Color in a different form. Uh, and PC. Uh, but it's The Grinch. It follows the basic story of the movie and stuff, but it's mostly a wintry level only on the very first area. There's four areas and a hub world. The first area is basically Whoville and continues the story of the movie and stuff like that. So you see more familiar Grinchy type stuff in the first level of the game, which is what I'm basing this uh, level from and this top 10 based on the first level. There is actually a wintry mountain peak area where you're climbing up a mountain 
and it, there's snow all over that area. But not every level in the game has snow and stuff. There's like a beach area, and there's a dump area. Yeah, it's kind of a weird game. Uh, it's pretty wild, and it's a lot of fun, so you might surprise you that this movie-based game, based on a Christmas story, The Grinch, is actually really fun. So check this out on the Dreamcast if you ever get a chance. Alright, now we're on to number 7 on my list. We've got the game Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo, as well as Super Donkey Kong for the Super Famicom. These are the exact same game, uh, so I'm just showing both of them for number 7, because they're literally the same game. Uh, but Donkey Kong Country features some really impressive graphics for the time. It features 3D and multiple parallaxing, and it just looks great overall. This first snowy level, actually there's a whole snowy like world area in the game, uh, the Gorilla Glacier. And it's really an exciting part of the game. It really tenses up the player and it really gets your nerves going as you slide and jump through these very, very narrow uh, platforms in the game. And the level that we're looking at today features um, a really great blizzard effect at the very start of the level, like a really strong snowstorm. And as the level goes on, it clears up, which I thought was a really nice effect. The music on it has been done by David Wise, and the soundtrack for that stage in particular is excellent, so we'll give that a listen too. It's really a fun stage, it's a really tricky stage if you don't know what you're doing. Even if you're doing it fast in like a speed run or just going through it fast on your own, uh, it can be challenging. You can mess up and slip up really easily on this one. And while there's more ice levels in this game, including cave levels, I think the snowstorm levels on the mountains are some of the more interesting for me. Donkey Kong Country. Spoiler alert, we've got a lot of Kong games on this list, and coming up at number 6, there's another Donkey Kong Country video game on this list, and that is Donkey Kong Country 3. I had to give this one a shout out because of, not only is there a continuing uh, theme of winter levels in this game, there's actually a whole winter world where you find an evil snowman, but the first level that's a winter level in this game is what we're looking at today. So that's, once again, Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble for the Super Nintendo. And this game also features an interesting cheat code. If you enter this cheat code that I'll show on the screen, uh, at the file select, it'll enable it so every time you run into a bonus barrel or bonus minigame throughout the game, it'll turn into Christmas music style. A, a song called Jangle Bells, yes, Jangle Bells, not Jingle Bells, Jangle Bells, will play in the background of the bonus rooms. It'll change all the bananas into ornaments, and uh, different things will play out in the bonus rooms. They're pretty much the same, but with a Christmassy theme. There's also really nice winter levels where, once again, like in Donkey Kong Country 1, a snowstorm will appear and the snow will fall, and then it'll ease up a bit depending on where you're at in the level. The level design's really great in this game, and I really like this game. While it's not necessarily better than Donkey Kong Country 1, it's up there in terms of quality. Alright, moving on to number 5 in my top 10 most memorable wintry levels of video games, we've got a classic here from Squaresoft, Final Fantasy VI. Now I'm counting this as a level, kind of. It's not exactly a level because it's an RPG, so it's more of a scene in a game. The opening scenes of this game, the very beginning, when Terra and Biggs and Wedge are on their Magitek armor and they're marching towards the town. That is one of the most iconic shots in video game history, and one of the most iconic shots in RPGs, and it makes it one of the most memorable scenes in a Final Fantasy game. Not only does the graphics look good, the music is perfect by Nobuo Uematsu, and it's just, it's just amazing. It looks so good, and it fits the game, and it sets the style and theme of the game, the way the game feels, perfectly. It's a little bit darker than the other Final Fantasies before it, and it has a really nice sound quality too. But not just the intro, you're going through a town in a wintry setting with snow on the buildings and snow on the ground. You fight against wolves, soldiers, and even really mammoths at the beginning of this game, with your party as Terra, Biggs, and Wedge, who are part of Kefka's army. Terra's brainwashed, and you'll find out more all about that in the game Final Fantasy VI for Super Nintendo. This one's on Super Famicom here because, well, let's face it, the Super Nintendo one's a little rare. Um, so, Final Fantasy VI is an awesome, awesome ultimate RPG game that is a must-play for RPG fans, uh, but the wintry level at the start really gives me some memories about the game. Like, when I think of Final Fantasy VI, I always think of that opening scene and Terra's theme from the video game. Um, and inside the wintry town, you also find some nice caves, and that's where the story really begins to unfold. Final Fantasy VI is number five on this list. 
Next up on the list, we've got number four, and that is a Star Wars game, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Not based upon a Star Wars movie directly, but set in between the events of Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, this game features the character Dash Rendar, a Han Solo-esque character who uh, basically in this game goes through missions for the Rebel Alliance and uh, has his own adventures. Sometimes he interacts with characters like Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and others from the movies, uh, but for the most part it's his own story. So while the game isn't entirely set in a winter setting, the first two levels are. They're set on the planet of Hoth, which is an ice planet in Star Wars, and you've seen it in the movie Empire Strikes Back, so this is set around the same time. Now, the first level is what we're looking at particularly, which is basically a snow spear level. The snow spear is a special type of Star Wars ship, and they use it in that level to combat probe droids, AT-ST walkers, which are smaller walkers, and uh, the bigger at at which are armored transport mechs that have Imperial troops, the enemies, the Empire, in them, controlling them, and they're about to destroy the Rebel base. And while they do destroy the Rebel base at the end of the stage, you get to take down a few of them with you. And uh, it's really exciting. To me, although it has been done before um, with the Hoth level in games like the Atari and on the Super Nintendo as well, they have a Hoth level in those, this is the first time on N64 that, uh, the first time in video games at least, that I felt like I could actually like feel like I was in the movie. Like This felt like I was playing uh, a scene from Empire Strikes Back. Uh, because the other games were two-dimensional mostly, and even with Mode 7, they didn't really quite hold up to the 3D graphics of the Nintendo 64. While this game is also on PC, uh, we played it on N64 today, and it's just a great scene. It's a snowy ice planet, definitely counts as a wintry level for me, and yeah, this game's great. Star Wars Shows the Empire. It also paved way for future Star Wars games such as the Rogue Squadron series. And it's actually been done better in other games. They even have it in Star Wars Battlefront and stuff like that. The Hoth level is an exciting part of Empire Strikes Back, and it makes for a memorable scene in a video game. And I believe that Shadows of the Empire was the first place to get the Hoth battle right uh, in terms of being the closest feel to the movie. And it's very memorable to me playing this at an early age. Um, it's just an exciting game. Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Alright, now we're getting into the top three. Number three is Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64 has some great snowy and ice levels. There's actually two that I can think of that are specifically snow levels. Uh, we're talking about the first level here and a specific mission on that level where you rescue a penguin. It's called Little Penguin Lost. Uh, you start out and you've probably already figured out the level by then because it's one of the first missions. It's not the very first mission on that level. And to complete it, you have to carry this penguin from the top of a mountain and slide all the way down, navigate your way past the enemies, all while holding on to the penguin so you have limited ability, and then Mario takes him all the way down to his mother at the, at the bottom of the mountain and hill, and rescues the baby, reunites him with his mother, then she rewards Mario with a star, and then that's how you complete that level. It's very short, it's very fun, but it's very well designed and very memorable. It's one of the first three-dimensional games, it's, it's the first 3D Mario. It's on the N64, it's new, it's hot, I got it for Christmas, and it's so awesome that when you're playing that level, it's completely different than any other Mario game you've played before it. And it's fresh, exciting, and it's short and simple enough that anyone can pick up and play this game and enjoy it. And right now it's on the Nintendo Switch, it's been on multiple Nintendo consoles, but this is the original on the Nintendo 64, and it's definitely a level worth mentioning and checking out. Alright, the number two game on this list is Diddy Kong Racing for the Nintendo 64. Yes, another Kong game on the list. Now this game, Diddy Kong Racing, is a game that features Diddy Kong and other characters from Rare, including Banjo and Conker and some other characters. And it's a racing game, but it also has an adventure mode. It also has a battle mode. It also has a Grand Prix type mode. It has racing on different vehicles, including planes, hovercrafts, and carts. So this game is much more expansive, and I think a lot better than you might expect at first. Uh, considering there's only one game in the series, for the most part there was a DS remake, but it wasn't as good as this one. Um, considering this is like the only game in the series, and Mario Kart has so many games, I think this game is better than most of the Mario Kart games. It has so much more to offer, and a lot of things. It doesn't have Mario or the main characters that you might know from Donkey Kong. Uh, but it's so good. There's so much good about this game. 
The adventure mode's long and rewarding. There's lots of secrets to uncover and things to unlock and things to do. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. But specifically on the winter level, there's a whole winter area. Like, there's the hub world, the island. You go to different hub areas that are based, based off of, branched off into different themes. You have, like, a dinosaur prehistoric world, and then the, the second one is a, a wintry level. So you've got lots of different ice and snowy levels. The level we're looking at here today is a winter village type level with a lake, a village, caves, and forests. The music that plays is something that reminds me of Christmas music exactly, but it's not quite an actual Christmas song. It's its own original composition, but it just sounds like Christmas music. So when you're racing, it's really fun racing. This is one of my favorite levels in the game, favorite worlds in the game, and it's really exciting to play. It was a lot of fun playing this again today. Diddy Kong Racing, really a good game, and the winter levels are very well done. I remember getting this game as a kid for Christmas way back in the day, and it, with the memory of playing it early on Christmas, as well as the wintry levels and Christmas themed music in this game, it's definitely a memorable wintry level for me. And I highly recommend that you play Diddy Kong Racing next time you're on a Nintendo 64. Before we get to the number one spot, here are some honorable mentions. Some games that I thought of were awesome for this list, but they didn't quite make the cut. One of those is the game Batman Returns for the Nintendo NES here, and the Super Nintendo, two different versions of the game. They're both beat-em-ups, both based on the second Batman movie, Batman Returns. And I was going to do a full review of this, but I don't think we have time. But Batman Returns is set in a Christmas time, and uh, it has a lot of snow, a lot of dark, gothic-style imagery. Uh, but it's all set in winter, so you have like that light parallel of snow effect on it. And these games are really good. They're really fun. Beat em up games for the Super Nintendo and the NES, and I just really like these games. I beat this one completely earlier this month, and I haven't quite completed the NES one. The NES little, this one's a little bit more challenging. There's some crazy stuff in this one. Uh, it kind of reminds me more of the NES game on Batman visually, but it plays more like a beat-em-up. This one is a beat-em-up, and then some of the stages are platformer, and there's some epic boss battles in this game as well. Another honorable mention that just barely didn't make the list, Sonic the Hedgehog 3. One of the levels in this game, Ice Cap Zone, is really awesome. You start out with Sonic the Hedgehog on a snowboard, of all things, going down a mountain, and then it jumps you right into the gameplay. It looks great, it sounds great, the soundtrack on that level is amazing, I love the music. And once you get to the second act of that stage, the second level of the ice area, uh, the music gets, in my opinion, even better. It sounds more like a remix or maybe a dub version of the music from the level before it, and it just sounds great. I love the music on this level, and the gameplay is fun too. Both levels in the ice cap zone are a little bit different, the second one's more on a lake, the first one's more on a mountain, and a cave. And it's just a really fun one. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is one of the best Sonic the Hedgehog 2D games, and uh, Ice Cap Zone is a lot of fun. Now the final honorable mention is a game that has ice in the title, so we gotta include that. Ice Climber for the Nintendo NES and the Nintendo Famicom. They have slight differences, some enemies are different in both versions. Uh, but it's a basic arcade-style game where you're jumping up a mountain and collecting points. There's enemies you have to dodge, obstacles you have to jump over and under, and it's a lot of fun on the Nintendo NES and Nintendo Famicom if you like the arcade challenge. Ice Climber. Alright, we're moving up to the top of the list now. The number one game of Kevin's Best Winter Memories video games is none other than Metroid Prime. We played it today here on the Metroid Prime Trilogy for the Nintendo Wii. Specifically the level Fendrana Drifts is what I'm talking about, because the entire game is not a wintry or ice or snowy level. Uh, but there is a big area of the game called Fendrana Drifts. For one, the soundtrack is amazing and fits it perfectly as atmosphere. Everyone knows this is an atmospheric game. It's a first person shooter in sci-fi style. But it's not like your other first-person shooters. It's more about exploration, learning, information, sciencey stuff, sci-fi, and uh, exploring the area and getting immersed in the gameplay. The graphics are really detailed. Like I'm looking in the water, the icy water. And I see little fish swim by. Oh, there's snow falling everywhere. Uh, there's different platforms of snow and ice and a mountain. 
and different enemies and stuff. You have to fight these enemies very specifically. You can't just shoot them. You have to jump around from the back and then shoot their shell off. Then you can destroy them. Uh, Pendrona Drifts might not be the best area of the game. It's not even my favorite area of the game. I love it. Uh, my favorite area is actually the Down Frigate area, which is really awesome in its own way. But back to Fendrana Drifts, a very iconic moment of the game. Um, it's one that I think most people really remember, and I think a lot of people really like the soundtrack in the area too. It's very piano-y, very uh, atmospheric and calming, but there's a sense of dread to it because there's danger. And, which basically fits the icy, mountainy theme of uh, the game that the music is going for. So, Metroid Prime for the Nintendo GameCube and the Nintendo Wii. Just saying, Nintendo, I would love to see an HD version of this on the Switch. Just saying, it would look awesome and sound even better. Anyways, Metroid Prime, Vendrana Drifts is the number one game on this list of Kevin's most memorable wintry games. We checked out lots of different games in this video. All top 10, plus some honorable mentions, and this is a fun list to do. It's fun to check out all these games once again and see how much fun they really work. So it was really fun to check out these games, and a lot of them, most of them, I want to keep on playing still. Alright everybody, that's it for our list today on Happy Bird Games. I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, stay safe this winter, and have a Happy New Year. Alright everybody, thanks for watching once again. Remember, you can check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as well. Like, subscribe, comment on this video, and share it with your friends. And yeah, it's just a really fun list to make. I had a lot of fun making this video, and I hope you had fun enjoying watching it as well. Alright everybody, thanks for watching. Bye! Ho ho ho.